Today I wanted to discuss why you probably really do need a small diaphragm microphone in your home recording studio. So just so you know, the definition of a small diaphragm microphone is obviously gonna revolve around the size of the diaphragm itself. That number is three quarters of an inch or less. Anything smaller than 0.75 of an inch will classify as a small diaphragm microphone. The big advantage of using a small diaphragm is that they move much more easily than a large diaphragm, meaning that the smallest disturbances in the air will be captured by a small diaphragm microphone, where a large diaphragm microphone won't even be able to get some of those sounds. So we're talking about transients here, and specifically in the high end, right? Transients. Um, when you talk about transients, we're talking about the, the more subtle details of a high end signal, right? So we could think about this uh, like an acoustic guitar. You could think about this in woodwinds, in stringed instruments like violins or mandolins, things like that. There is high end information coming out of those instruments that a large diaphragm microphone simply cannot capture because of the physical nature of the large diaphragm. So something like this, this is my favorite one. If you're a regular viewer of my channel here, you know this is my Lewitt LCT 140. I have a few different small condenser microphones. I also have the Avantone CK1s and I also have the Cat Audio E70 microphones, small pencil condenser. I like all three of them. This is my favorite of the three and I still do use all three occasionally depending on what I'm recording. They all have different purposes. One of the things I like about the Avantones is that you can change the capsule themselves. So uh, you can change the polar patterns and you know get different tones out of it by changing the polar patterns. But in general, right now, this one, the LCT-140 is probably my favorite because of the fact that it is not, none of them are brittle. And I, that's one of the reasons that I bought all of those microphones. Um, although I will say, I never bought this microphone fully in full <laughs> disclosure mode. This was given to me by Lewitt Audio. They sent this microphone for a review, uh, which happened, I don't know, a long time ago. And I do have a review for it. I'm gonna pop it up, you know, in a link uh, above my head right now. And, uh, but anyway, so these were sent to me for a review and by far one of the most impressive small diaphragm microphones I've ever heard, especially in the price range. I don't wanna make this a review of this microphone because A, I've already done that and B, that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I wanna tell you though, is that if you are someone sitting there struggling to find the right acoustic guitar tone, if you get there into your mix and you find yourself like pushing the high end of the EQ on your acoustic guitars or the piano or whatever instrument you're recording with a large diaphragm microphone, chances are a small diaphragm microphone is gonna solve that problem for you because inherently they capture more high end and the transients in the high end, right? It's those little tiny details that make a sound poke through a mix in a way that a large diaphragm microphone simply cannot do, okay? So I love small pencil condensers on uh, acoustic guitars, like I already said, but it's also not a bad option for vocals. I just released a video the other day where I was singing into this microphone and it was a challenge because yes, they have a larger dynamic range than a large diaphragm microphone. They have pretty wide dynamic range. And that's because of the ease of the movement of the diaphragm inside the microphone itself. Meaning that it, you know, it will capture low sounds or low volume sounds and high volume sounds, right? That's what we we're talking about when we talk about dynamic range in a microphone is like, how well can it capture low volume sounds like transients, right? So because of the extreme sensitivity of this, it was a challenge to sing into and get like a good uh, smooth vocal take as far as the audio signal is concerned. And in that particular case, I wasn't using a compressor, um, which I would recommend. If you're gonna sing into this, it's ideal to have a compressor, but for other reasons, I didn't. Uh, and if you watch my mix breakdown that came out this week or last week, last Wednesday, um, you, you'll hear why I didn't use a compressor. Anyway, point is that it's really nice for vocals as well, especially if you're gonna be doing like a, a low volume, like a breathy kind of vocal or something like that. Really great for breathy, soft sounding vocals. 
Um, yeah, I don't think enough people really truly comprehend why they should have this in their studios. And again, if you are somebody who struggles to get good acoustic guitar tone, this is probably the answer to that problem, right? <laughs> so there's not a whole lot more I wanna say about this, but I do want you guys to do a little more research to go out there and read all the stuff on the internet, <laughs> all of it, read all of it uh, on, the, on the topic, right? There's a lot of really good articles out there. If you don't believe me, um, there's a lot of really good information out there. A lot of engineers use small diaphragm microphones in the most large professional recording studios there is a reason that you see these being used all the time, and that's because they are the tools for the job, right? Uh, you can't just buy, you can, obviously, you can buy just one large condenser microphone and use it across the board. There's lots of microphones that are good at capturing everything. But when you really want to get into that more specific, detailed sound, these are the microphones for that job, right? Um, you know, there's all sorts of different ones of these. I like the LCT 140s the, by Lewitt Audio right now. Inexpensive, not brittle sounding, nice smooth high end. And I have made a demo. Um, I'm gonna leave a link for it down below. Um, but yeah, they're just great little microphones. And in general, if you don't have one, you should check them out because they're really, really cool to have. They're very specific for what they do. You know, they don't, they're not great at everything. Like, like some large diaphragm microphones are great at everything basically. But this is a very specific tool for the home recording studio or any studio. And so if you don't have one, you should probably go out there and buy one. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to an Amazon link. And just so you know, if you buy this through the Amazon link, it doesn't cost you any extra money, but I do make a little bit of money of that because I'm, an affiliate for Amazon. And if that's uh, something you're interested in doing, purchasing one of these, you can help support my channel by doing that. So you guys, I think that's all I really need to talk about today as far as small diaphragm condenser microphones are concerned. If you have any questions, please, please, please find me here. Leave comments here. Find me on Facebook and definitely find me over on Instagram because I'm trying to get more people on Instagram. And uh, I think that's about it. All right, bros. Talk to you later. Peace and love.